car. Uh, that extra gear, the first three steps. Huge strides in the performance that I might not be the player I am today. Welcome to another episode of Behind the Gear. And today we have the uh, fortunate opportunity here to sit down with uh, Bo Horvat. And kind of a bit of a follow-up from last year. Um, this winter as well, I got, it was awesome, but I had Timmy on and Timmy was, Timmy was great. Yeah. It was good to go through kind of, even, even kind of looking at, at the whole process of just being a dad and having a kid and or two boys and, and them playing hockey and going through all that. And kind of the, it was, he had some good stories. Yeah. No, I listened to a little bit. Of, he, <laughs> I, he had a ton of fun telling it. I mean, he, was awesome, he, he loves, man. uh, first of all, he loves talking <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, but he, uh, no, he really enjoyed that. He loves sharing his stories and, and, um, obviously loves watching Cal and I play hockey and, and basically do whatever we do. Yeah. Um, he's always been there for us and you know, we're definitely lucky to have him. Yeah, I know for sure. Passionate hockey dad, right? He Obviously, is, yeah, and, I mean, yeah. probably the most passionate hockey yeah. dad, and one of them anyway. Now, if, like, if we went into Vancouver's locker room right now and said, "Hey, boys, like, who would you rather have around right now, uh, Timmy Horvat or Bo Horvat?" What do you think? Uh, the one hundred percent, it'd be Timmy Horvat. <laughs> <laughs> it's basically every road game we're on. Is Timmy here today? Is Timmy <laughs> yeah. here to make the trip? Yeah, no, he's uh, no, he's always trying to make hockey games. Whether yeah, um, he's a ten-hour drive. Um, across the country. It doesn't matter. He's, uh, he's going to try to be there. Yeah, I know for sure. Um, so kind of just following up, I guess with kind of what we, I know last, last episode, we talked a ton about just kind of your whole journey through hockey and stuff like that. Um, and one of the questions I remember I asked, yeah, it was, what's it like to actually get paid to play hockey? What's it like to be like an actual professional hockey player? So when you wake up in the morning, especially the off season right now, a little bit more downtime, you don't have to be at the rink right away and kind of chill out. I know you end up coming to the rink anyway to work out, but um, when you wake up, like what are some thoughts that kind of go through your head as far as like, man, this is what I'm doing for a living. Like, is it surreal at times? Is it kind of like, you know, when, cause when you ultimately achieve that goal, you know, what, what's it like to kind of reflect on that and say, you know, man, you know what I kind of, I'm, I'm here a little bit. Yeah. I mean, I, first of all, it's the best job in the world. Yeah. Uh, you know, I, I wouldn't want to be doing anything else uh, rather than play hockey. Uh, I don't know any other career where, um, you know, it's going to make me as happy as I am right now. Um, you know, obviously I worked hard to, to be uh, where I am today and um, yeah, waking up every morning, it's just basically, it's a dream come true. I mean, um, you know, I obviously, you know, you don't do it all for the money. Um, yeah. for me, it was, you know, for the love of the game and you know, it was just kind of something that comes along with it. And, um, you know, just waking up every day, um, having to go to the gym, you know, obviously the camaraderie with the guys, uh, you know, I don't think there's any better, better, any other better job in the world for me. No, oh, that's cool. And I mean, like getting paid helps a little bit. Right? Oh, for sure. Yeah, I mean, and obviously better. there's some perks to it for, uh, in that sense, but, um, no, I definitely, I feel very fortunate where I am right now. No, oh, it's awesome. man. and, um, being in Vancouver, obviously there's been a couple of years there where kind of changing the guards with the cities, you know, retiring, things like that. Um, it's exciting to see some new young guys, you know, obviously yourself, you've been there for a while now. Um, you're kind of almost becoming one of the young, young, older guys, mm -hmm. I guess. Oh, yeah. uh, but what's the pressure like being a pro player as far as every year there's a new draft, every year there's new guys coming in. You got guys like Patterson that show up that are, are, are real good. And what's kind of, what are your thoughts? Cause I know for me personally, as a competitive guy, you know, you're kind of established and you're, you know, comfortable, comfortable as far as, you know, you know, you're not probably going to get sent down right now. Right. Um, but at the same time, you know, you're looking at these guys coming in. Is it, is it one of those things where, man, this is good. They're going to help our team get better. Or at times it's like, okay, these guys might catch me. They're starting to nip at my heels a little bit. Are they going to steal my ice? Are they going to steal my kind of my shifts? You know I what I mean? mean? It's a little bit of both. Um, yeah. As especially while well, I think obviously when you establish yourself as a, you know, every day NHL or that's, you know, you kind of feel a little bit more confident going into camp, but at the same time, you're happy that you're drafting these great young players, but at the same time, you're like, okay, if I don't come into camp in great shape and if I don't work hard in the summertime, these guys are going to take my job. Yeah. And, you know, you want to keep pushing yourself to be the best you can be. And, um, you know, my goal is to obviously to help the team win, be a good leader, um, and, you know, do whatever I can to be a better hockey player coming in, ne in into the camp next season and in the season. Um, you know, we don't want these, you don't want uh, other guys to take your job. You, yeah. you want to keep pushing yourself to be the best. So, um, you know, it's, I, I'd say it's a little bit of both. You want your team to get better, but at the same time, you want to be the reason why your team's getting better. And I, I mean, I don't think that you'd be playing in the NHL if you didn't have a bit of that, right. Where you're, you know, and I think one thing that you've done a good job of, and I'd, I'd like to hear your thoughts on this, but you've kind of established, established yourself on, in, on your team in the league as you have some invaluable assets as far as like face off stuff, uh, being good defensively and we're playing kind of the cliches that 200 foot game, but playing in all three zones, defense, no neutral zone, offensive zone. 
Um, are there parts of that, 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 that you really kind of focus on and really kind of work at religiously, just basically to kind of keep yourself a little bit different than other guys. Like are there parts of your game? You're like, I need to keep focusing on this in order that that'll help separate me and keep yeah. that gap. I mean, you, you watch these guys, you know, Bergeron O'Reilly, and you're watching these two guys in the playoffs and obviously Taves and, yeah. and you know, you want to be like, those were guys that I looked up to when I was young and um, you know, I, I want to be, exactly like those guys, yeah. you know, and push myself to be better. Um, you know, I think that if I keep working on the 200 foot game and, and, and being good defensively and obviously, and then add that scoring touch too, where I have, you know, hands and speed and, yeah. and kind of that almost like that triple threat where you can be good in all three zones. I think that's just going to take my game to the next level. And I think, you know, when you do get these dynamic young guys that come in that maybe are more offensive or then that gives, you know, basically you, an opportunity or them an opportunity to play with a guy who's solid in all three zones and potentially have a little bit of chemistry there and maybe start creating some stuff, you For know? Sure. Yeah. And, and our coach did a great job of, you know, if we needed uh, a little push, he'd put me with, you know, Pedersen and, and Besser, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like where, or if we need to, you know, save a goal or, you know, uh, protect the lead, then he'd throw me out with, you know, de more defensive guys. So to kind of be that middle guy where you can, kind of lean to lean, you know, get leaned on by the coach both ways. I mean, that's the best situation you can be in. For sure. And I think to have that trust in your, you know, your coach trusts you that much where he can put you in every key situation. Uh, that's my main goal. And that's what I want to be, um, you know, going forward in the league. Are you, yeah, I mean, and you've kind of always been this, but I'm, I'm assuming you want to be that guy that's out in the last minute. Oh, yeah. And the guys yeah. on the power play. Absolutely. And the guys out killing penalties. Uh, it and, drives me nuts. It's yeah. just like, uh, you want to be out there every single minute, every game. You know, and that's the way I look at it. You yeah. Know, if you know, I I didn't kill a ton this year, and you know that's something I I want to do. Like I want to I want to be on the penalty kill. I want to be on the first unit power play. I want to, you know, protect the lead with a minute left. You know, and win that big face off. So I think that's what pushes me, and that's what you know I have that drive, and I yeah. think that's what you know obviously makes me a better player. No, for sure. And going back to like that. So let's say you know you're not playing a lot on the PK right now, or like last year in spurts. Um, how, how do you address that? Cause you know, in minor hockey, you'd be like, well, I'm going to go talk to the coach and be, Hey coach, I'm just wondering what I can do to get on the PK. You know, how does it go in pro as far as how do you address that? If you're rattled about not playing on the power player, not playing on the penalty kill, they're not getting enough ice. Is that a conversation that you'd breach with the coach? Would you talk to the assistant coaches first or would I mean, you just kind of suck it up? And I, I think you have to express yourself. I think you have to go and talk to at least somebody, whether it's assistant coach, head coach, um, you know, or else they they never know how you're feeling or yeah. what or what you're thinking. So, um, for me, I, I would go and talk to them about uh, about different stuff. I mean, I, it's kind of a tough situation for him because he was already you know I wasn't killing the ton. I was already playing 23, right. 24 minutes. Yeah. So I'm like, yeah, I want coach, more I need ice. more ice. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, it's kind of a tough situation yeah. there. But um, you know, it's uh, you know, it's something obviously I love doing. I love killing penalties and. And obviously you, you want to be on the top unit power play too. So you can't get the best of both worlds sometimes. Um, but uh, obviously I took a lot of face offs last year, whether it was, you know, take the face off and get off or, yeah. you know, kind of that kind of stuff. But I think you definitely should go talk to at least your coach or assistant coach and, and see what they say. Yeah. And sometimes just that kind of that squeaky wheel, right? Like just talking, getting it out there. there then the coaches talk kind of exactly. behind the scenes, like, man, this kid really wants 100%. it. Or, you know, yeah. A hundred percent. Yeah. 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 Um, when you, when you look at kind of basically the makeup of, of your team and things like that for you now with all these young guys coming in, what kind of a role do you see yourself playing as far as like in the locker room, things like that? I mean, you've always been kind of a bit of an old soul and not in a bad way, but you've, you know, you've always been grounded and you've always been very modest about your play and, and kind of a guy who's never that kind of wild young kid that all of a sudden made the NHL and couldn't wait to go buy that new brand new car or whatever. Right. Um, but for you, like what kind of a role do you see yourself playing for these new guys coming in? Um, I think obviously I feel like an old person saying this, but like just sharing what my experience is with them over my first five years or six years or whatever. Um, and you know, obviously just telling them to be smart about it. I mean, pick and choose your times. You don't have to, because you're made it to the NHL, you don't have to go crazy. And you know, like, like you said, spend all your money or, um, you know, go and party it up or, you know, obviously there's a time and a place, but at the same time you want to be in the league it's, it's a short career, really. Yeah, I mean, for sure. You're in the league for maybe, I think, I think, I think I looked it up. I think the average was like six or eight to 10 years or yeah. max. And that's, then you got the rest of your life to, right. to kind of figure yourself out. And I mean, yeah, you, ha you have to be smart about it. And, 
Um, I think that's what I realized really quick where, you know, this isn't going to last forever. So to maintain my body, to maintain, you know, money and, and all that, I think it was really important to me where, you know, I could be done, you know, at any time, really. I mean, with any injuries or, or, I mean, knock on wood, but, um, you know, that's something that I really take personally. And, and I wanted to, to make sure that I'm set up for, for the rest of my life. Yeah, no, which is, I mean, smart. And I thought that was one thing I know we told the story before, but for people that hadn't heard it before, I remember coming into the rink one day, I think you just signed uh, and everyone kind of knew everyone's excited about it. And maybe it was a couple weeks later, you came in with a nice, I think it was an Audi. It was beautiful, like great car and come walking out. And I was like, man, nice, nice wheels. And I've seen a lot of guys sign and a lot of guys wheel in with like beautiful cars and I'm like, great for, you know, great. A lot of money, whatever. And you're like, yeah, I got it secondhand. Man. I was like 20 something grand. I'm like, no way. <laughs> yeah. It's like a it's real true. expensive car. I was oh, like, yeah. awesome. Yeah, That's awesome. great. Yeah. But like, again, like good decision. Something exactly. that maybe you tell a young guy, like yeah. go get a Jeep, go get something that's maybe a little bit le- this fun, fun to drive. But yeah. why do you need a Mercedes or like exactly. some hundred yeah. thousand dollar car that. Yeah. Absolutely. Know? Yeah. You know, I, I wanted to get a car cause obviously I needed one like yeah. in junior, you feel like you're a big wheel, you know, <laughs> you got a <laughs> yeah, car, but for sure. no, I, yeah, I didn't want to spend, you know, I forgot my first signing bonus and I didn't want to spend all of it on, you know, you know, all of whatever 60, 70 grand on, on a brand new car. Yeah. I wanted to kind of be smart with it and, and obviously treat myself a little bit, but, um, you know, put the rest away and, and, and save, but yeah, no, it's, uh, I don't know, it's just the way I am. I That's agree. Call yeah. me cheap with all you want, but <laughs> you know what? I, I need it. Yeah. Yeah. No, it's yeah. good, man. Uh, and uh, where's that car now? It's uh, handed, I handed it down to my brother. Cal's got yeah, it. Right? Cal's got it. And Has I he pimped he, it out even more? No, he's actually, he traded it in. Okay. <laughs> oh yeah. He traded in for and bought, uh, bought his own car. So nice. yeah, oh, it's, uh, it's no longer in the family anymore. It was getting a little it bit. Stuck around for a bit it though. It's it stuck around for Close to six, seven years. So that's pretty yeah. solid. Yeah. It's that's not good. bad. He had a good career. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's good, yeah it was yeah. time for it to retire. <laughs> yeah. There you yeah. go. Um, and, uh, and Cal obviously is a guy, you know, a young guy who played hockey and, and played high level, played junior B and, you know, had a good, good run. And now is kind of doing his own thing, kind of took his own path. Right. Mm-hmm. Um, what's it like when you guys get together as far as just being brothers? When, is it totally just kind of totally normal? Like kind of enter his role a little bit in the summer and see what he's got going. And Oh yeah. He's, it's awesome. Actually. I, I kind of, I love the path he's chosen. Yeah. Um, he's, he's going to be a, going to try to be a police officer. So he's a cadet right now and uh, he's got to be a cadet for whatever, one or two years. And yeah. then he, he can be a constable, but just hearing some of the stories already that he's, he can tell me, um, you know, it kind of takes your mind a little bit off of hockey and yeah. you don't have to constantly talk about hockey all the time. And, uh, it's kind of nice to to have something that we can, know talk about uh other than that and he's loving it he's doing a great job at it and i couldn't be happier for him oh that's awesome that's really cool yeah. and he can help get you out of jams so yeah exactly so jam, i can so yeah, get you out. watch out london i'm i'm gonna be flying down roads <laughs> no yeah, you know his no, business yeah, card yeah, in your exactly. wallet so yeah you know cal horror but he's my brother <laughs> yeah yeah that's not that's you'll get on a jail free card yeah, right exactly, there, right yeah yeah, yeah. i yeah. try not to go over there no you'll be all right yeah. You'll be fine. Yeah. Um, when you guys, when you guys travel and stuff like that, like as far as, you know, during the year, you're obviously in Vancouver and that's kind of home base for you. And then come back to London in the summer. Um, you know, what's, what's it like kind of on you, on, on you and Holly, I guess, just as far as like, you almost have two different cities, two different lives, right. As far as getting entrenched in, in one city and then coming back to the next city. Um, is it tough making those transitions all the time? Is it something that down the road, potentially maybe with a family, things like that, you may stay one place or yeah. is that something that you kind of see yourself just cause you're close to family here yeah, and stuff? I mean, I think it's a lot harder for, for her. Um, I mean, she's stuck in the city. I get to travel and go to warm places and, you know, um, kind of get away a little bit, but yeah. you know, she's stuck, you know, either in Vancouver or in London, basically, you know, she's got a job in Vancouver and then summertime she comes home. So, um, I think it is tough on her for sure. Um, you know, with me gone a lot cause the travel in the West, is insane. Yeah, um, for sure. You know, we're, we're gone quite and a bit. long, like long exactly. trips. Right? So like we're yeah. gone sometimes 14, 15 days in, in a row. Right. So, yeah, I mean, and she's got no family out there. She's got a couple of friends and obviously the girls, but, um, yeah, it, it's, it's definitely tough. It's, it's tough to adjust, um, when you're, you know, coming home and seeing family again and, and, uh, you know, having, you know, basically everybody around you all the time in the summertime and then going back out where you don't have a, a ton of people that, you know, uh, it's definitely not easy, but, um, you know, she's a trooper and, yeah. and, uh, you know, she's been supporting me ever since, uh, we started dating. So, um, 
no, it's uh, it's nice to have her out there for sure. No, oh, it's cool. And she's, I mean, obviously you guys have been together for a long time and way before, you know, mm-hmm. you played for Vancouver, which, yeah. so she's seen the, the poor man. Exactly. Ball and she's the guy who's she's got seen a job. both sides of me. <laughs> The yeah, guy who's in the sure. middle world right now, paying, yeah, mor- no. paying mortgages yeah, and stuff. Yeah, exactly. You know, grown up stuff. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, no, she's uh, definitely uh, been in it with me, um, you know, at my lowest times and, and my highest. And, and um, you know, obviously it's definitely one of the big reasons why uh, we're getting married here in the summer. No, it's awesome. No, yeah. That, yeah, it's that's really cool. Now, in let's, let's talk a little bit about that because obviously getting married, which is exciting, and I mean, uh, basically you're throwing your life away. But don't worry about that. No, <laughs> yeah. I'm kidding. No, we'll talk about that. Later. <laughs> yeah, no, no. Uh, but uh, awesome. Now, who's who are some of the guys that like are your obviously your close buddies? But who are the guys that are be, that'll be standing for you? Are the guys that are um, yeah, I, I got a good crew. Um, obviously, my brother's gonna be my best man. Yeah, um, my cousin, uh, buddy from back home, uh, Ryan, uh, and my cousin Julian, and then. Um, we got Max Domi, mm-hmm. uh, obviously a good buddy of mine from junior. Yeah. Chris Tierney and Josh Anderson. Awesome. And Sven Berchi. Okay, so, cool. Yeah. So I got uh, I got a good, good cocky crew coming <laughs> along with me. Yeah, it'll be dangerous. Yeah. Um, no, they're they're a great bunch of guys. Um, yeah. No, Ryan, I knew ever since I was little. I uh, went to preschool and grade school and everything with, and obviously Cal and Julian. Yeah. Basically. Kinda your you know, whole life, my right? My whole life. That's yeah. My, my best friends were my family yeah you know, you know, living in a small town and obviously we're um you know max chris and uh um, josh we we're best friends and in, in junior hung out all the time and and then um sven is a great buddy of mine on the team but uh basically i hang out with all the time too when i'm when i'm in vancouver and um you know i i wouldn't want to have anybody else uh standing beside me but those guys that's awesome good mix of uh some some old you know some mm-hmm. Some school guys, yeah. some guys from back home, and then exactly. a good mix of the, yeah. the poor the guys. guys. Yeah, and you, Anderson, and Tierney were basically like grinding out the O together as oh. far as being fourth liners, God. not yeah. playing, being on the we, bench. Uh, yeah, we talk about it all <laughs> the time. Every time we get, um, every time we get together, we talk about junior all the time. Yeah, it's never about the NHL. It's never about. Um, you know, how we're doing, obviously we're, we're asking each other how yeah, we're, how we're sure. liking things, but it goes right back to how things were in junior and. It's always the best. And okay, so when you guys chat about that, you guys like talk about how much at that time, let's say your first year together, because you guys were fourth liners at that time. Yeah, like, we played the all same good line players. Together. And that was an unreal fourth line. When you look at it now, you're like, oh, oh yeah. and you guys, you guys actually were I was really playing, good. I was playing the wing. Okay. So Tierney Anderson. when you guys are sitting there, would you guys just like, I like, I hate the nights. I hate oh, yeah. Mark Hunter. Like, oh, this yeah. is, what yeah, is he yeah. doing to us right now? Oh yeah. 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 Well, I mean, exactly. Yeah. Like, we're, we're being wasted right now, <laughs> but yeah, we're, we're a great line, um, in the playoffs too. And yeah. And even during the regular season, we were called the gray line and we were in the papers and we were getting all the recognition and stuff like that. So, um, I don't know how many fourth lines in junior get all no. that recognition, but yeah, we talk about that kind of stuff and Mark, you know, giving us hell. So oh, all, yeah, all the time, and, time. Um, yeah, just great stories like that. Yeah. And you know, I, I wouldn't trade it in for the world. We talk about how much we miss junior all the time. And yeah. you know, those were some of the best years of our life. You know, we weren't making any money yeah. really. We, you know, um, you know, be, you know billeting, but it, it was, it was, it was so much fun. It was the best. And, uh, you know, if I could go back to junior, I would hundred yeah. percent, but, um, you know, it's, uh, it's always great to reminisce with those guys. It's funny though. When you are in junior or let's say you're, you know, minor hockey, whatever it is, you can't wait to get to junior. And then when you're in junior, you can't wait to get to the NHL or yeah. whatever AHL play pro hockey. And then when you get to that level, just like when a young kid just can't wait to get a job and I get the real world kind of sucks, man. When you oh, got yeah, mortgages right. and car payments and all this other stuff, you know, in junior you had nothing, you nothing. Got, you no, got, you yeah. got your billets taken yeah. care of. You, you and, got obviously. Yeah. And other than that, it's just yeah. go and have fun and play hockey. And obviously you are stressed out, but we drafted and what you're going to sure. do, but uh, if I have any advice for anybody playing junior or going into junior, it's just enjoy it. Yeah. Have fun with it. Enjoy the guys. You know, don't be in a rush, really. Yeah. Uh, because, you know, eh, when when you make it to the NHL, obviously you make it to the NHL, but, you know, these guys, they have families. You know, you don't hang. You know, if my first year there, I, I lived by myself. I was the youngest guy by, I think it was five years. So In like, Vancouver. In Vancouver. Right. So, like, I mean – I was kind of by myself for a lot of that year. Uh, and there was a couple of single guys and, and guys you'd hang out with every once in a while. But at the same time, like other than that, you're, you're by yourself. And, yeah. you know, in junior, you're, you're with the guys all the time. They're all around the same age. You know, it's just, um, 
know, it was one of the best three years of my life. And, yeah. and, uh, some, you know, obviously friendships and, and people you'll never forget. And it, it, like, you bring up a really good point because everyone thinks like, you know, I remember talking to well, your cousin Trav connecting about it too. When he went to Philly, a lot of older guys and a lot of the guys that have been in the league for one or two or three years, they they're already, they already have their routines down they're, they they're, they maybe got another friends away from the rank or whatever it is, but it is a bit like, I'm sure there's days you're sitting by yourself in the apartment being like, man, what are like, what do I do now? Exactly. Yeah, for right? sure. Yeah. Let's go for a walk by myself. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah Check out Vancouver yeah, yeah, exactly. in the rain. I mean, yeah. Stay at the rink till 5 a 5 p.m. <laughs> yeah. But um, yeah, it is. It's so, it's so different. Yeah. And, you know, and probably are, didn't expect that, right? Like didn't think of that part of it. No, when you, you don't. And, you know, guys are going home to their families their kids their you know, yeah. Grandkids. Yeah. <laughs> you don't know, but yeah, like, yeah. Um, yeah. It's totally different. Um, I, yeah, my first year, it was just me and my, by myself and, you know, guys would come home, you know, go to their kids or bring their kids to the rink and you're, you know, these little kids are running around. You're like, where am I right now? Like, is this daycare or is this the NHL? You know? Yeah. But, um, yeah, it's totally different like that. But didn't you guys have, uh, in your green room for a while or maybe still do, did you guys have like basically a romp room after like it was just set up oh, for a playland for kids? It's insane. Yeah. It's, I mean, the, the wise lounge is just, it's a playpen for kids. And then you come in the room after the game, after everybody's cleared out and it's full on mini stick soccer games. In the so locker. I, oh yeah. All the time. Yeah. I hop in that every once in a while. And For sure. Yeah. Show keep, your skills. Keep them humble. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know, <laughs> your dad plays in the NHL, but I can still say it. You know? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, it's fun. Oh, it's cool. Yeah. Um, when you, uh, when you look back on kind of that, that, that whole junior process, basically, um, mm. what are some things that, you kind of took away. Cause I know, you know, it's a story I tell to a lot of young kids that take advantage of situations. Meaning if you do have access to strength coaches or nutritionists or skills guys or whoever it is, and you want to try to make that jump to the next level, let's say for the old, for instance, they kind of cover a lot of that stuff. They cover your ice, your skills, all that stuff, take advantage of it. And you're one of the guys through junior that did take advantage of it and, and did work a lot of extra stuff and did work on your game. Um, but when you look back on kind of what type of player that you were, especially that first year thinking like, I'm, I'm better than this. Like I'm, I, I should be playing more. I should be on that second line. Like, look at that guy. Can he pick up a pass? Um, are there things now when you look back, you're like, man, man I wasn't that good. Like I needed, like there's certain parts yeah. of my game. Like I needed to get, you know, is there a lot of Skating. evolving? Yeah. Yeah. Like big time. Um, I definitely need to get faster and work on my first three steps, which, you know, I, yeah, yeah. I worked on, hammer on a lot, yeah. all the time. And um, yeah, but first of all, I shouldn't, I, uh, I wasn't a winger <laughs> you know, <laughs> right. playing my first year. I didn't, I didn't want to play the wing <laughs> yeah. first of all. And yeah. then, um, yeah, as soon as basically I was like, I, I need to get to center. And as soon as I get to center, I can really, you know, take my game to the next level. And in my second year, they just threw me at center. I, I, I can't remember the reason, but. Cause just, you would have got drafted kept, out of minor midget as a yeah, centerman, as a but center then man. they pushed you to the wing just to kind of yeah, whatever. To make room yeah. for. The but you were probably scared to get 17 other centermen that they had. <laughs> right. Yeah. But you were probably scared to get stuck on the wing, right? Yeah, Potentially. Absolutely. Yeah. And maybe because I was a bigger, bigger body can yeah. handle myself on the wing and a 60 year old that center is it's tough in the league. But, sure. Um, yeah. As soon as they, in my second year, as soon as I guess maybe they saw me take a couple face offs, they're like, wow, this, you know, maybe we should throw him at center. And, yeah. And, um, I just kind of, I mean, the rest is history. I just kind of took it and ran with it. And, yeah. and, um, yeah, I just, yeah. I mean, I guess yeah, I only had one year of center at junior and then I got drafted. So, right. I mean, yeah, you think about it. Yeah. Uh, I didn't play center my whole first year and then played a whole year center in my second year and then got, ended up getting drafted. So that's pretty, yeah. no, that's, yeah, that's, which is kind of crazy to go yeah. from there to the next level and, and having success at that. No, when you go to that next level, obviously like when you think of taking draws in junior hockey compared to taking draw, draws yeah. in the NHL, night and day, yeah, stronger, not. smarter, like the whole nine. Right. So how Not did, close. how did you make that jump or how did you help prepare for that? And, and maybe, maybe when you got there, you were kind of like, Whoa, I need to do some work on this. But was there a little bit of preparation junior knowing that you're going to be a centerman, maybe playing the NHL as a centerman? Um, was there stuff that you kind of prepared earlier? Cause that's one of your crafts. That's one of the things that you're good at. And you know, big part of the game now is winning draws. Right. So is that something that you kind of, started to hone in junior and then tr help translate to, to pro. Well, yeah. One, like my dad is, was always huge on face-offs. Like ever since I could basically skate, it's yeah. like, you know, you have to be really good at face-off. Face-offs are important. Face-offs are important. And, um, in junior Dylan Hunter was great with me. Yeah. Face-offs. Cause he took a ton when he played pro yeah. in junior. 
And um, kind of, I I used to keep my hands basically the same as yeah. I'd shoot, and then I switched it around. Dylan told me to switch around, and I never never looked back from there. Yeah. Um, and I think obviously with London, they're so successful as a junior organization that guys come back all the time, and you know during lockouts, like or if guys um, are you know still here during the first part of the. Um, our season in junior and they're waiting to go back to the NHL. Yeah. Like they'll come out and skate with us and just getting tips from like Corey Perry or um, Dave Bowen would come out or, or even Ryan O'Reilly when he was um, yeah. going through contract negotiations and having those guys come out with us and skate and, and show me different tricks of the trade. Um, I think helped me. That's a pretty ton. cool. Yeah. yeah, exactly. And then obviously getting to the NHL, it just, you kind of take those things and, and learn different things about what other guys do and just kind of run with it from there. Oh, that's yeah. That's great. When you talk about flipping your hands over, so kind of like you shoot here, flipping that top hand up and over, what was the biggest difference that you noticed when you started flipping that? Yeah, just strength. Yeah. Way more power, way right? more power yeah. when you're pulling it back. Yeah. Um, you know, here, the, the, when you're getting, you know, in the NHL or even in junior, when you're going against an older guy, it's tough to grip your stick like this and not get it blown out of your hands. Yeah. You know, when yeah. guys are pulling back on it. So as soon as I switched it over and, and had that strength to pull it back, it yeah. was, yeah, it was night and day. Yeah. No, sure. I, I know, it, and this is years ago now, but I noticed the same thing. I used to like be pretty solid at draws in college. I went to pro. I was like, guys are so much stronger yeah. and you have to adjust. For and sure. I did the same thing. Like I'd win them on both sides on my backhand. Yeah. Like on, on turn that hand over and it was a night and day, but it was crazy how much stronger guys no, were. It's, it's, <laughs> it's crazy. smarter well, too. It's like, it's old man strength. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's what, that's what I'm going to blame it on. Old man strength. <laughs> yeah. Who are some of the, who, who are some guys that you take draws against that are like, like every, or every couple of times, just like, well, what did he just do there? Is there anybody that kind of stands out? Um, yeah, there's a couple of guys. Obviously Kessler is just a prick to yeah. go against at face offs. You know, yeah. if, you, if you beat him, you're going to get whacked. <laughs> Yeah. You're like, you just know, like let them exactly. Let him win. Well, like I, I hate letting them win. Too, yeah. Cause then, yeah. But anyway, yeah, he's really good at it. Obviously yeah. he's really, um, he was good at it for a lot of years in the NHL Bergeron O'Reilly, you know, yeah. like all these guys that, um, that you go against, you're like, okay. But I think I, it makes me better too. When I go against these guys, cause I, I'm like, these guys are the best in the NHL. I'm going to beat them. Yeah. You know what I mean, it kind of yeah. gives you that extra motivation that drive to, to win face offs. Um, there's a couple guys say again, Duchesne, they do that stupid foot thing. Right. You know, so kind of block your exactly stick with their foot. Block the stick with yeah. the foot. I hate that. Yeah. That's uh, something that bugs me. But um, yeah, there's, I mean, they're all, they're all good really. Yeah. Um, and then what are some of the like older school guys? Like I remember you talking about, a little bit about uh, Joe. Oh, yeah. like, Joe Thornton Joe. is the best. <laughs> <laughs> you go against face, go against my face. Cause you don't know what he's going to do. First of all, you have no clue whether he's going to whack your stick or. Yeah just pick it clean or just, you know, he's six, five, two forty or two thirty. <laughs> yeah. whether he's just going to power through it or, um, no, he's funny to go against and face offs. And if you complain to the refs to him or like, yeah, if yeah. you complain to the refs, he'll come right over and call you out. He called <laughs> me out a couple of times. Cause I'm like, like, what am I supposed to do against this guy? He's not even putting a stick down. Yeah. Yeah. He's, he's pretty funny. And he'll basically just yeah, tell you, it like, doesn't even look like he's trying. He just, you know, snaps yeah. it back, picks it clean. You're like, all right, like, yeah, this guy's been around the league for 25 years. Yeah. Like, yeah. yeah. We'll, we'll stop complaining the refs from now on. That's hilarious. Yeah. That's so good, man. Oh, yeah. Who who are some of the hardest guys that, that, uh, cause I mean like the role that you're playing, a lot of times you're playing against top two lines, right? You're playing against some good, obviously like best players on the other team. Are there guys that stand out to you that, that, that you've had a chance to play kind of numerous times and maybe like, man, this kid or this guy has got, crazy skill like a guy I, I for me personally and you can chat about him if you want but that i didn't watch a lot was uh it was mckinnon in in uh, colorado mm -hmm. and then in the playoffs i started tracking like there was late games so i was a zombie for a couple weeks there but i was watching those games because i was into it and mm -hmm. calgary's good and then but man i gained such i seen highlights of him and watched a couple games here and there but watching him like four or five games was like wow arguably one of the most i think Honestly, he could be top two players in the league. Yeah. My opinion. Yeah. Unbelievable. Like his speed, his hands, um, his thinking is just incredible. Yeah. Like his first three steps and his explosiveness is his power. Right? Power. Yeah. He's barely moving. Like he doesn't even look like he, Nick David. You know, he's fast because his yeah. feet are going up a thousand miles an hour. Sure. He is, yeah. He's, yeah. he's the fastest point. guy in the league. Yeah. But this guy, this kid is like so powerful so shifty 
um, and has a deceiving shot. Like he just, yeah. I don't know. It's he's so hard to play against. Yeah, and I think, and he he doesn't really like he obviously these top offensive guys they do cheat. You have to, sure, you know. But he doesn't cheat a ton. Like no he, way. he's pretty good at faceoffs. You know he. He plays well in the D zone and yeah. you know, he plays well. He plays a, a pretty good 200 foot game, but man, can he skate and it's unbelievable. Like his, yeah. his hands and his, I mean, his side to side movement. Yeah. There's a reason why he gets hundred points. Yeah. You know what I mean? And he, like he's got obviously Landis Gog and, and um, Rantanen yeah. that are really good players, but I think obviously he, he makes that. He pushes line. the pace, he man. Does. Yeah. He does. Yeah. He makes it. And is he heavy when he's like, he is. And he's, he's freakishly strong too. Yeah. Like he's, um, yeah, like to try and knock him off the puck, it's, it, it's tough. Yeah, yeah. No, he's he's one of my favorite players to watch by far. Yeah, by far. No, hey, I, I McDavid. Um, yeah, obviously, you know you got those skill guys, um, but you know the Marners and the Matthews and stuff like that. But um, for him, he just yeah, he's, he's like he's a wow factor out there. Yeah, for sure. I was overly impressed by him. I was yeah. like, man, this guy. I knew he was good, obviously, and like one of the top players, but. Just the little things he does, his footwork on stuff, on cuts, and his Insane. hands and feet, the way they move together when he's cutting and, and making. And his head fakes. I mean, yeah, there's some, there's, when I watch him, there's a lot of unnecessary. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Kind of like yeah. little stick taps sure. and like stick handles and stuff like that. Yeah. Like his, his hands are always moving, always. But in doing puck. that, sometimes you'll see that it'll slip on him, right? Yeah, the yeah. puck, will, he'll lose For it because sure. he does overhandle at times, but I mean. But he's so fast, he'll get it back. Yeah. You know <laughs> yeah, what I mean? Like true. he'll lose it and just kind of like yeah. snap it back and. Grab don't worry, it. don't worry, coach. Don't I got worry. this. Yeah, it's like, just right there. I'll go get relax. it. Yeah, but, yeah, yeah. No, he's uh, he's something to watch. If you got like anybody's got a you know chance yeah. to watch that guy play, it's it's pretty special. Who are some tough D to play against? Like when you're guys, when you're going up against guys, guys that may, not even tough D guys you hate playing against, just because maybe they're dirty a bit, maybe they beat the shit out of you in front uh, of the net, maybe they're you know hard uh, on you. Yeah, obviously, Giordano is a good player because we yeah. play against Calgary all the time. Um, you know, Char is tough to play against. I yeah. Mean, just when you think he got him beat, his long seventy foot stick twenty five foot, foot stick comes out of nowhere and knocks it out. Um, yeah, you get Carlson on um, uh, Washington, who's a really good player. Yeah. Uh, Hadman, I mean, there yeah, there's so many good defensemen out there. Yeah. There's a lot of underrated, like uh, Brent Burns. Yeah, he's not underrated, but like he's phenomenal. Yeah, you know his he's so hard to block shots because he shoots everything and yeah. really good in the D zone, plays hard. And, um, yeah, there's, I mean, there's so many good defensemen out there that, yeah. that we play against, uh, Doughty, you know, yeah. he's, he's tough to play against too. He's obviously, um, you know, Norris trophy winner. Yeah. He's, uh, you know, a great hockey player too. So yeah, there, there's no easy nights in the NHL. That's no, something that new about junior where you're going in and you're like, okay, we're playing against so-and-so it's point night tonight. Right. You know, you know you're going to win, but like yeah. in the NHL, it's crazy, right? Every night, you. yeah. Every single night, you yeah. have to be on your game because you never know what's going to happen. It's really hard to bet on. It is, <laughs> yeah. Seriously, I know. How's your pocketbook? <laughs> yeah. No, I, I'm not. You know what's funny, man? Is I got the buddies. I don't not not really into it, but I got buddies that do bet on games, yeah. but they're betting more on the OHL games because there are sure for sure sure wins. Whereas Absolutely. the NHL, especially the last couple of seasons, like, crap shit. I mean, even the playoffs, how, you saw it. Every every series got dumped on its head. Yeah, like how your brackets doing, everybody. You right. know what I mean? Like yeah. it's 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 crazy. I think that's what is so great about the NHL is that you don't know who's gonna win. Yeah. Like basketball, it's always, you know, Golden State. Obviously happy for the Raptors to, yeah, for to be sure. where they are, but uh, you know, it's you know, those teams are expected to be there and like they're basically they're there every single year. Whereas in the NHL, you know, Tampa Bay Lightning they right. they get knocked out four straight first round like who saw that coming you yeah know what I mean it's just like um it's totally different anything can happen definitely definitely and now over the like it's which is crazy we were talking about this before the podcast but six years it's been for you as far as being in the league which is insane have you noticed any big changes over those six years as far as just like the the style of play even even the new players coming in like you guys got a pretty you know pretty nice gem with Pedersen as far as how skilled he is but have you noticed a difference as far as even some of the young kids coming in or, or even the pace of the game or the skill set of the game over those six years when you yeah. think of, I mean, it's changed quite a bit. Um, yeah. No, every, I mean, I think a, a lot of guys can speak more than what I can, but cause I was kind of just the start of the new game kind of sure. coming in, coming in. But, um, I think obviously it's got a lot faster. Um, guys are, they're not as big anymore. There are some big guys still, but, 
I think all four lines can play, you know, yeah. all, all four lines have, you know, uh, obviously hard workers, but they have a lot of skill. There's not very many big, heavy fighters anymore. Um, it's changed a ton that way. And, and I find that a lot of more skill guys are, are coming into the league where it's just completely offense, yeah. you know, and they'll eventually learn the defensive side of the game where I think before you had to learn the defensive side of the game and then let the offense come. And, you know, that was kind of my role, I guess you could say, yeah. where they thought I was going to be basically this fourth, third line centerman that, you know, puts up, you know, 30, 40 points a year. Yeah. Where, um, you know, I had to kind of prove myself where I was going to be better than that and, and be a second, first line center. And that's what I'm going to keep you doing. Yeah. No, for sure. I think the the when I when I look at young kids right now, the skill set at seven, eight, nine, ten is insane compared to what I was, or, oh, even, yeah. or probably even what you like. For you sure, were, right? I like, sucked. Man, <laughs> I was terrible. Yeah, actually, I wasn't even playing at that age. So it didn't <laughs> matter. But uh, but I think with YouTube and watching like NHL clips, watching all this stuff on the internet, these kids are learning new things, obviously. And then with the skills coaches, like there's a ton of skill coaches everywhere. Yeah, some are great, some aren't great, like yeah, anything, right? Exactly. But the kids are getting access to extra ice and extra programs and working on things and man, it's, it's, it's insane. But I think what I, what I see is down the road, I don't know how mentally tough these kids are going to be overall, as far as how they're going to be able to adjust to that yeah. junior hockey or that coach that's telling them they're going to play in the fourth For line sure. and they're shitty and, and how they're going to adjust as they're moving forward. And that's part of, you know, no, I, I think, think yeah, being mentally tough is, is a huge part of being an NHLer. I think yeah. being mentally strong and, you know, if somebody tells you that you're, you're garbage and you're not going to make it, prove them wrong, you know, don't take it personally and, and tell them, you know, I mean, take it personally and, and push yourself through it. You yeah. know what I mean? Like if, if a coach yells at you in the bench, don't sulk and pout about it, you know, figure out what he's yelling at you for it and, 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 you know, be better and do it and prove to them that you can be better and, and, and make it to the next level because I, that's what I find too. Like you mentioned it, like, I don't know. I, I think uh, there's, I mean, it's, it's touchy, but you know, you have to be, strong and you have to be you know mentally tough to to make it to the next level because you know there are going to be times where people are going to tell you that you're no good and that you know you're not good enough to make it or you know you're playing like shit and yeah and you have to pick up your game and, and you have to do it or else you're going to lose your job yeah you know what i mean and i think if you have that uh, mental toughness you're going to take you to the next level as well and i mean you know growing up playing minor hockey and then junior hockey and world juniors, all this stuff. You see, you've played a lot of real good players, real skilled players. And some that were probably more skilled, better than you. Some of them never panned out and some of them never played in the NHL. Right. And they had potentially more skill or, you know, whatever it is, but there's certain things that make up these players that are playing in the NHL. And, you know, if, if you had to pick two or three things that you see on kind of the most, the majority of the NHL, cause you're always going to have your outliers. They're just skilled enough to play in the NHL. Mm -hmm. Kind of like you're skilled enough to play Adam triple yeah. These guys are just good enough yeah. and natural enough to play at the NHL level. Right. But if there's like two or three different characteristics that you would say are pretty common among most NHL guys, what would those be as far as work ethic, yeah. whatever it is? Ability? Uh, you hit one right there. Yeah. Work ethic. Um, you have to have a work ethic to play in the NHL for sure. Um, yeah. You have to find ways to get better and work hard and come into camp in great shape. Um, I think obviously being mentally tough, um, for me, I think, you know, like, again, people telling you you're no good or coach yelling at you or, um, you know, be even being mentally tough on the ice where, you know, you're just a minute left and you're not panicking with the puck or, um, you know, I think that's a huge part of the game too. And um, obviously you have to have a little bit of skill. In, yeah, in, that might in, help. In hockey yeah. sense, you yeah. know, you have to, you have to have those. I think those are, are big things in, in confidence. Yeah. I think being confident in yourself, being confident in your abilities and, and, and basically what got you to that level. And if you put all those three things or four things together, you're going to be a heck of a, a really good hockey sure. player. You know what I mean? Yeah. So uh, if you're confident in yourself and work hard and, and you're mentally tough, uh, you're going to be a heck of a player. No, um, I don't want to keep you much longer. One thing I want to touch on quick is that mental part of the game, which I think is huge. And a lot of times we say mental toughness and I'm sure a lot of kids are like, what does that mean? What does that mean? But kind of that perseverance that, you know, and how, how do you develop mental toughness? You know, I think my personal opinion is parenting. So, yeah. or coaching, mentoring, whoever that is, but someone that keeps kids accountable, makes them own stuff, for sure. you know, whatever that is. Right. And keeps them. And I mean, I think it starts at young ages. I don't think you can flip it at 16. I think it's something that 
starts at, at young ages, but for you going through, you know, obviously your, your hockey career now, when you do have slumps, cause everyone, you know, you start off saying, I got the best job in the world. I love what I do. It's awesome. But man, there's some times where it sucks. And for a guy like me or somebody else outside looking in, uh, maybe, maybe not me cause I kind of get it just being around it a lot, but Hey, suck it up, man. You play in the NHL, you're getting paid to play. Like why, like why are you miserable right now? But there's a lot of times where you're in a five game skid or you're in a oh, yeah. slump on your own or the oh, media's yeah. on you. And like, you kind of get put in a hole sometimes, especially as a younger guy. And man, like it, and that, I think that can avalanche sometimes on guys where you have a couple of bad games, a couple of bad days, and then it's just like worse and worse and worse and worse. Um, number one question, I guess, have, have you experienced that yet? Like as far as just whether it's junior playing on the fourth line or whether it's in the NHL going on a skid or going on a bit of a slide, has there been times where you've just been oh, yeah. like, gone dark? <laughs> yeah, for sure. I mean, it's, it hasn't all been sunshine and rainbows. Yeah. I mean, like, like you said, playing on the fourth line junior, not playing center, been playing center since I've been, you know, four years old, like, yeah. you know, and, and having that switch, it definitely wasn't easy on me. And, and, you know, seeing sometimes five minutes a game and, um, yeah, I mean, you're going to go through these dark times and, and it's just how you push yourself through it. And like you said, being mentally tough enough to push yourself through that. And then, um, you know, going through slumps where, you know, we went through like a 10 game losing streak, you know, my second year of, yeah, like I think it yeah. been over ten games, and and during that time, I was I didn't have goals in twenty six or twenty three or twenty seven games or something like that. Like that's a lot of games without <laughs> yeah, a goal. A lot, you know yeah. what I mean, yeah. like, and you're going through that. You're like, am I ever going to score in the NHL again? Yeah, you know? and like it, it wears on you. Like it's like any job. I'm I'm sure. Like For you sure. have your boss yelling at you. You're, you know, you're having a bad day, and you know, it, yeah. it wears on you no matter where you're playing or, you know, what you're doing, you're going to have tough times and it's just how you pull yourself together and push yourself through it. The only kicker though is like when I work, I don't have like 10, 20,000 people just watching. Yeah, exactly. I know it makes it that much more, so more pressure, right? For sure. Um, and are, is there anything that, that like, let's say, let's say on a five game skid and, and maybe that turns into like a 20 game skid of not scoring, which is hard on a four, especially a guy who puts up points and is, you know, there to contribute. Right. Um, is there anything that, that you kind of do when, when things aren't going right and kind of going gets tough? Is there anything that you do to kind of somebody maybe you talk to, or is there anything that you, okay, I gotta, I gotta start jogging. I gotta start walking. I gotta start doing yoga or something to kind of get you kind of ramp back into it. One big thing for me is for, especially kids nowadays is stay off social media. Okay. Massive. Yeah. That's a big no, no. Yeah. Because if you like, you know, when you screw up. You know what I mean? You yeah. don't need to go on Twitter or Instagram or whatever, whatever, yeah. you know, social media thing you have and see what other people are saying about your shitty sure. turnover. You know what I mean? Yeah. You know that you screwed up and, or if you had a great game, you don't need other people telling you how great you are. Like, I think, you know, for me, that was a big thing because as soon as I made it to the NHL, you definitely, I mean, it's just, it's human nature. You want to see what people are saying about for you. Sure. And you get, you know, for every great thing that somebody says about you, you get one negative thing that somebody says about you, you're going to remember that negative thing. Yeah. And that's something that I was like, okay, I have to stay off social media right yeah. now because, you know, it's just going to eat you and eat you and wonder why, why, why doesn't he like me? Or why does he think, you know, why did he say I'm the worst hockey player that he's ever seen here? You know, right. for, for yeah. me, like when I got traded for Schneider, like that was a horrible trade. This kid does done nothing, you know, it, it wears on you. And for, sure. you, for me is, is stay away from it because it's just going to eat you. And it, it, cause it ate me and I had to kind of just kind of calm myself down and relax. Did and anybody give you that it. advice to be like, Oh man, just like, trust me, I've gone through it. Just you know, stay off social media or Hey, did anybody kind of talk to you about that? Or um, not really. I think it was just, you kind of realized, kind of realized that yeah. it's, were you going down some good holes on that and just kind of getting caught? Like, Oh yeah. Spending on that minutes or hours on there just going through feeds. Yeah, absolutely. And, yeah. And it's, it, it, like I said, it, it, it eats you, it, it wears on you. And, and you're just like, okay, like if everybody thinks this, then I must be shit. Right. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, it's, um, you no, know, it's something that I think kids nowadays have to stay away from because it's, it, it's not good for them. It's not good for their confidence. And, and some people can be you know mentally abusive and, and verbally abusive on there. And for it's, sure. it's, it's not cool. Yeah. Because, um, you know, you know, people, anybody's going to take it to heart, no matter who you are, or if you have a, 
zero followers. I mean, if you say something like that about somebody, you're going to take it to heart. Yeah. So, um, yeah, but that's one of the bigger things I think for me. So I, th- I think that's really good advice. And I think, I think social media has its, its good things. I think it's got yeah, its positives, absolutely. obviously. Right. And, but, but, but I think to your point, you know, when something bad, yeah, you have a bad gamer, you haven't scored in 20. I mean, imagine absolutely. checking feeds after not scoring in 20. The, the problem with social media is that if I was sitting here beside you and I thought you sucked, I wouldn't be like, Hey, Bo Horvat, you suck. Exactly. Cause you might punch me in the face For or sure. someone might spit on me yeah. or some other guy might call, you know, yeah. but if I'm at home, in my boxers, yeah. you know, pound some pizza, be like, man, yeah. you're terrible. This guy's yeah. brutal. Like, and, and some of these guys and girls have no clue about no anything. Nothing. Absolutely. They just nothing. love Vancouver. They love whatever. Exactly. And it, so that's the other hard part is de- deciphering through, you know, yeah. and I then mean, some, be, some people have made careers over social media. Like I'm not saying it's a, a bad thing, but yeah. like, pick and choose when you go on and, and Google yourself. <laughs> you know <what> I mean? <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah. Because yeah. it's, uh, yeah, it's it's not always sunshine and rainbows again. Like <laughs> no. it's, you know, some people some people don't like you. Yeah, and, and while you know, you could be the greatest guy in the world. You yeah. just you're, some people are not going to like you. Yeah, so, no, for yeah. sure. Um, and throughout that kind of like going through kind of again junior minor hockey all that stuff, because I mean that's not easy, man. Even that whole Schneider thing you talked about, like you got traded, they moved up, traded Schneider, who Vancouver loved, and he gets traded. You get you get drafted there, and now all of a sudden it's like well, we just lost a really good goalie and we got some first rounder who's yeah, maybe he's not done nothing. And you haven't even stepped yeah. on the ice with them yet. You didn't do anything wrong. No. Just, they picked me, man. They didn't have to pick me. They did. Exactly. Now all of a sudden you're so, in a storm. Yeah, for sure. And, and I couldn't have just been picked by some random team. You know? <laughs> right. like, it's just like under the radar. Exactly. Like, yeah, hey, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. Thanks for the picture. No, I was the talk of the draft Yeah. because of the whole, the whole trade. Yeah. And, and it's, it, it definitely, again, social media and, and it was, um, you know, fans were, they're were hard on me. I'm not going to lie. They were, you know, obviously because I, I haven't established myself in the NHL. They don't sure. know how I'm going to turn out. Right. Yeah. So again, I think, but that just added more fuel to the fire. And I think I wanted to prove myself and prove to people that, you know, the trade was worth it. And, and you know, I was going to be, um, you know, well worth, you know, Corey yeah. Schneider. And, sure. And, um, you know, I talk about it all the time, but it, it's so true because, um, you know, it definitely, it, it pushed me to be better. But man, at 18, that's not like, that's not an easy thing to, to, to come to camp wearing, yeah. you know what I mean? Which is, which makes it tough, obviously. Um, and what were your kind of, what's your, what was your support group like around that? Like, as far as going through that kind of stuff, like your dad, your mom, obviously yeah. probably the, family and just, I mean, they've been obviously yeah with, with me through thick and thin uh, again, you know, obviously can't thank them enough for what they've done for me. And, um, you know, whenever I'm in a slump or, you know, have questions about what I think, you know, I should do better or, or get better at, you know, my dad's probably the first person I talked to. Yeah. Um, and obviously Paul and, and my mom and, and I talked to those people, you know, those guys too, about my, about my game and, and, and what they think. And, um, you no, know, they're always really supportive. You know, they're never, yeah. gonna, you know, the people that love you and that are around you and that, uh, you know, the value as a person, they're never going to tell you, you know, that you're, Dog, yeah. dog shit or right. you yeah. know they're never going to go tweet something about it so yeah. they're they're the only opinions that really matter yeah oh yeah. no, for sure um what's the best uh text you ever got from your dad like Ooh. like give like give me a couple because i know there's been like hundreds of thousands of them but yeah even just anything like after game in warm-up or anything that like that you've seen oh. just been like okay yeah no whenever honestly i think probably whenever i pass up a scoring opportunity <laughs> he'll text me like it will be like the SH and then a thousand O's <laughs> shoot the puck. I love like, it. And, and that'll be it. <laughs> <laughs> like, it's just shoot the bleeping yeah. puck. And and you, you, you already know exactly what oh, yeah. that oh, yeah, 100%. Game. Yeah. Or hit the fucking net. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> just that's it. That's all he'll text. <laughs> and I you're just it. like, but it, honestly, it, it's so funny because as soon as I miss the net in the game, you know, I'm be like, oh boy, <laughs> it's coming. Here we go. Yeah. Timmy's texting me. <laughs> He's not even waiting till the end of the game. It's in, it's in my locker right now. Yeah. And my phone. That's yeah. hilarious. That's now, good. Obviously you get the, um, no, yeah, no better feeling, you know, I have text message when, you know, your parents say you're, they're proud of you. Yeah. Obviously. For sure. 
Um, yeah. Those are just some funny ones. That, yeah, no, uh, I love it. Yeah, because I know Timmy gets oh, like yeah. anime, he's passionate, oh, right? Oh, yeah, for sure. And so, mom, mom was just, you played great tonight. Every yeah. single night. Yeah. Or Hall, you know, you were awesome tonight. Thanks. <laughs> you know what I think? It's Dash 3, man. Yeah, exactly, cool. yeah. No. <laughs> mom, I sucked. You know, I was, yeah. I yeah. had four turnovers. I was Dash 4. Yeah. I wouldn't have a good game. <laughs> no, that's awesome. You were great. Well, listen, buddy, I really want to thank you for coming yeah. by. Um, it's that always great awesome. to catch up with you and stuff too. And best luck this off season. And obviously I, I'm, I, I said this to you last year too, and I know, you know, didn't make the playoffs, but I, I love the way Vancouver's been playing and kind of moving a little bit. Mm -hmm. And hopefully there's some stuff going on with the draft and maybe some yeah. moves that a lot, but I mean, you got some awesome building blocks there and I'm sure for you're, sure. I'm sure every year it's getting a little bit more exciting to go back to camp and kind of get things started. Mm -hmm. And you got some Absolutely. nice, some yeah. Nice I can't wait. There, we got so. a lot of great young talent. We got a lot of great young players, and and I think we're we're taking a step in the right direction this year. And I think we're just going to continue to keep getting better. So it's yeah. going to be a lot of fun. Oh, it's awesome, man. Well, good luck, buddy. Yeah, thank you. All right, man. All right. Okay.